What's good in the Doge hood? How is my Doge hodlers, my Doge army doing on this lovely Sunday? Hopefully everybody's doing wonderfully blessed and having a great day. This is your boy Jaime G. You all know what time it is, baby. It's that Wild Wild West crypto land time where we talk about Doge and overall crypto market news. Please, guys, remember, none of this is ever financial advice. It's just your boy sharing his thoughts, opinions, nothing more, nothing less. Never take it as so. If you do shit, I don't know what to tell you other than you're fucked because I am definitely not a financial advisor. Well, now that we got all of that riffraff out of the way, I know I'm ready. Are you guys ready to find out what's going on in the wild, wild west of that crazy crypto land time? Well, without further ado, let's get it. All right, guys, Bitcoin is currently sitting at 41591 with 24 cents. We're currently down 0.02%. Not too bad, guys. Good old Grandpa Bitcoin is still doing its thing. It is still above 40000 right? So things are looking promising, right? A lot of people are thinking and still thinking that this is a bull trap and that this is just a setup and we're going to dip and yada, yada, yada. I don't. I think Bitcoin is always going to just do what Bitcoin wants to do regardless, right? As you can see, guys, the overall sentiment of the market is mixed, right, guys? There's uh, some red and some greens, kind of, you know, 50-50, right? But, guys, there's uh, um. It's a healthy pullback, right? It's not because we had a major dip or anything. It's just, you know, the market uh, consolidating, taking a healthy dip, or not dip, but just a pullback, which is always healthy for any markets, whether it's traditional markets or the crypto markets, right, guys? All right, guys, enough of all that. Now let's dive into Dogecoin. Uh, we're still number 11, not for long, right? We're still in that 0.1516, baby, at 15 cents. We are up 2.6% our 24-hour Low was 14 cents, guys, and our 24-hour high <clears throat> was 0.148, basically the mid-15 cents. Our market cap is at $20.1 billion. Our volume is at triple six points. Wow, look at that. 666.66 million dollars. Now, guys, Polkadot is sitting at uh, 20.93 uh, million or billion dollar market cap, guys, and we are 20.1. So basically, we are $1 billion shy of taking our spot back, and we're coming for you, Polka Dot, so be ready. All right, enough of the stats, guys. Let's dive into the charts and talk about resistance and support. All right, guys, so obviously, let's talk about resistance first real quick. So as you can see, right, we'll go back all the way over here, right? Well, uh, This was around January 10th, we'll say. This area right here, right? As you can see, this 15, this uh, blue line, guys, is coming in at 0.152, right? It's in 0.152. Now, as you can see, right, this was resistance, but then we broke it. We broke this resistance, right? We had our breakout when we had that uh, positive catalyst about Tesla accepting Doge for merch, right? And then we came back down, right? We tested this, uh, uh, this support. And we broke below it and made it into resistance. We couldn't hang, right? Then we consolidated, came back up. And uh, two weeks ago, right, which is 14 days ago, we tested it. And then we tested again on the 13th day, right? As you can see, we tested it two days in a row. Boom, we got rejected, right? And then we consolidated, right? And then we came back up. Boom, uh, day before yesterday, we tested it, got rejected. We retested it the next day and got rejected. And what are we doing again today? We are testing it once again, guys. Now, for those of you that don't know, anytime you retest something, whether it's resistance or support, it, it eventually gets weaker. So, in, And in this case, we're continuously testing resistance, right? We've tested it, what, uh, five times in the last two weeks, right? So hopefully we will penetrate it and break above it and reclaim this area as support and flip the trend, right? So... Now, that's resistance. Okay, so now, if we do break above this, right, guys, we will have uh, the 50-day moving average that will be coming in as our um, level of resistance. Now, let me bust that out real quick for you. And that's coming in at 0 0.1604. So, that is straight up like 16 cents for me right now. See, here's a 50-day moving average right now. Let me get rid of, uh, give me one second. Let me get rid of all this stuff here, guys. Okay, now I cleaned it up. So now as you can see, right guys, now once we once we break past this 0.152 resistance where that blue line was, then we'll be testing this uh, red line up here, which is the 50-day moving average. Now let me bust out the um, Bollinger Bands, right guys, so I can show you guys something here, right? So I've got a couple things to show you here. Uh, Bollinger Bands right there. Okay, now as you can see, right, we pretty much 
uh, this 50 day moving average is pretty much running parallel with that upper Bollinger Band, right, guys? So that could act as a pretty strong level of resistance when we come up to test that area. But until we uh, uh, break <clears throat> above this 0.152 area, then we'll worry about that 16 cents area as resistance. Now, no, let's talk about support. Okay, first things, now you see this middle Bollinger Band here, right, guys? It pretty much acts like a moving average, right? Now, let me show you what I'm talking about. So, let me bust out the 21-day exponential moving average, right? Which we have basically broke above it now, which is bullish, right? So, we got some bullish stuff going for us as far as on the daily chart, right? So, boom. Okay, now, as you see, this middle Bollinger Band runs parallel. What do you see, guys, on there? Now, as you can see, three days ago, we broke above this uh, resistance, right? And made this resistance into support, right? So, we took back this middle Bollinger Band, and we took back that 21-day exponential moving average, right? And as you can see, yesterday, we came down, we retested, and we solidified it. So, now we have three daily candles sitting above this 21-day exponential moving average. Therefore means that we have definitely reclaimed it in my opinion right so and being that we are on the upper part of the middle bollinger band that is bullish now when you're underneath that middle bollinger band that is bearish but being that we are sitting above it that is a bullish technical right so we are sitting above this middle bollinger band we have reclaimed this 21 day moving average not just that we also took back uh this eight day moving average right which was acting as a level of strong resistance for about a good eight to ten days now what do you see there right you see the eight day moving average you see that middle bollinger band and you see the 21 day exponential moving average they're basically kissing each other right they're all butted up sitting there right so we have reclaimed all these spots guys which is good right and so now for support that support is coming in at uh Right here, it's coming in at 14 cents, right, guys? It's coming in at 0.1439, right? That's where the Bollinger Bands, and that's where all three of these uh, are meeting up, right? The, the two moving averages and the middle Bollinger Band at 0.1439. That's 14 cents, in my opinion, okay? So, support, guys, is 14 cents, and resistance is coming in at that 0.152 until we break above it. Then we'll be looking at that 50-day uh, moving average as our level of resistance. All right, guys. Sorry, I took a little longer than I wanted to with the charts. All right. Any questions, please let me know down below. All right, guys. Now, let's dive into the only article that I do have for Doge. Now, it says, Dogecoin does it again. It's yet another milestone. It says, what a day for Dogecoin. The meme coin's official, uh, if you'll stop loading, that official Twitter account has now over 3 million followers. This is this is huge, guys. Now, it says, today, Dogecoin became the second largest crypto on the social media platform behind Bitcoin. And the Doge community was celebrating. Get this, guys. We're number two. We're right. We took Ethereum, spot. any other crypto, guys, out of all the cryptos. Good old meme coin. The alpha, the omega of, of meme coins. The, the, the big dog. Dogecoin. It ranks number two, guys. This is a huge accomplishment, right? Here's a lot of congrats. Look. Trading platform Hubai, right? It's giving congrats. It says Dogecoin's popularity has skyrocketed with continued support from Tesla. Um, CEO Elon Musk, during the fourth quarter of 2021, the crypto's Twitter account has been steadily growing after surpassing a million followers in April of last year. Dogecoin has set another historical milestone last week, right, guys? Um, as data showed that the Dogecoin uh, Doge smart contract is now the fourth most used contract on the Binance smart chain. Well ahead of Ethereum and USD. Not just that, guys. We are at a milestone. Also, we have basically, it was 489,000 wallets. Basically, a little tad bit shy of, of um, half a billion, half a billion, half a million Doge hodler wallets. Now, that is huge. Now, it says, despite its decline, the meme coin still sits the 11th most valuable cryptocurrency by market cap. For now, while the Dogecoin Twitter account marks today's milestone, Billy Marcus, the co-founder of Doge, who tweets under uh, Shidibidoshi Nakamoto, has himself surpassed a million Twitter followers. Now, this is huge, guys. Like I keep telling you guys, we're continuously having positive catalyst after positive catalyst. There's just so much bullish, positive sentiment surrounding Dogecoin. It's just not a matter of if, but when we are going to hit new all-time highs sometime this year. All right, guys. Now, that's what I had as far as uh, Doge goes. Now, let's dive into some overall crypto market news in general 
right? Thank you if you're still with me. All righty. Come on, load up, silly rabbits. All righty, here we go. Now it says traders move $800 million worth of Bitcoin away from exchanges. Now this is bullish as all get up, right guys? When people are pulling off uh, Bitcoin or Ethereum off of exchanges, that is bullish. Now when people are putting Bitcoin or you know, this substantial amount of Bitcoins on an exchange, then that is bearish, right? That's a possible sign that there's going to be a dump. But in this case, this means that people are hodling. A total of 800 million worth of uh, Bitcoin was moved from exchanges amid the sudden uh, price increase uh, of the first cryptocurrency, which currently trades at far above 40,000. The sudden price increase was quite a surprise for market filled with on-chain and fundamental data that suggests a further down fall of digital gold as the markets fail to recover numerous times exactly guys bitcoin does what bitcoin's gonna do no matter what you know what i'm saying this goes to show you right here you you, you can never underestimate the power of bitcoin now it says but while the major uh, the majority bet on the end of the bull market and a further drop below 30k centralized exchanges were constantly facing losses of their reserves which indicates that traders are not actively selling as the majority thought exactly right guys regardless right people are hodling right that is bullish now it says the first positive sign for the industry was the decoupling of the majority of cryptocurrencies on exchanges and the stock market that plunged while bitcoin and other digital assets were either trading in the neutral or positive zone exactly right on friday Right, we had the market, uh, the traditional stock market, right, was in the red, and Bitcoin and all the other altcoins were in the green. Now it says, uh, and then it just says, how do exchange outflows affect the market, right? And it just tells you about the positive, negative, how I just gave you the example, right? So I'm not going to dive all into that. I just wanted to, you know, briefly show you, right, the $800 million worth of Bitcoin being hodled. This is huge, guys. Now, here's some more positive news surrounding Bitcoin and the overall markets. Now, it says Bitcoin has become a top retirement investment option, survey shows. It says, per survey conducted by investment firm Capitalized, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies have been gaining relevance as a retirement investment options digital assets once uh, synonymous with speculation and gambling have acquired prestige as one of the best ways to secure people's future. I agree as well, guys. Now, it says the firm interviewed 821 employees and 203 financial experts in the USA. Their purpose was to explore the sentiment around adding Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies to the retirement. Now, it says portfolios and to determine the best time to purchase these digital assets. In, in the sense, the survey concluded that people have become more optimistic about cryptocurrencies in the past 10 years. Over 60% of the respondents believe these digital assets are a strong retirement investment option despite the volatility. I agree as well. It says, as seen below, younger generations are more optimistic about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies as retirement investment options. 78.2% of the respondents classified as Gen Z and 60%, 60.4 of millennials are bullish on digital assets versus 50.3 of baby boomers. Right, guys? Still most of respondents, 57, perceive cryptocurrencies as a volatile investment vehicle with potential for risk. Of course, guys, and, you know, high risk, high reward, just like in penny stocks, right? But the point being is, guys, that, you know, 10 years ago, people weren't looking at crypto. Even five years ago as a, a possibility for retirement. If my company was to give the option to invest into crypto as in retirement i would definitely jump on it man with the quickness you know but just goes to show you where adoption has come and 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 how closer we are getting to mainstream um this is just huge right oh here we go now this goes to show you as well on where we are at as far as adoption and how far how close are we are getting to mainstream? Now, it says Coinbase and TurboTax offer tax refunds in Bitcoin. Now, guys, who in their right mind would have thought that you would have been able to get your tax return in Bitcoin? Now, this is huge for adoption. It says it's tax time. That means a headache for digital asset owners and the IRS grows more aggressive about collecting on crypto profits. But there is small uh, silver lining. Starting this year, crypto diehards can receive their refunds. Uh, in the form of Bitcoin or other currencies, cryptos, thanks to a new arrangement between Coinbase and TurboTax. A deal book reports TurboTax users can ask uh, ask to direct any refund they are uh, owed from the IRS to uh, or state government directly into their Coinbase account and have it converted into crypto. Like I said, guys, we've came a long way, guys. Like just a couple years ago, you wouldn't have been able to do this. You can also um, 
allocate some of your paychecks, I believe, through Coinbase as well, right? I had talked about that in one of my previous videos where Coinbase is working on uh, that in New York Dig. Uh, where you can possibly do that right but your employer has to be uh on board with it but this is huge achievement for crypto itself right guys it just goes to show you on where we're going right now i'm gonna close out with this article right here thank you if you're still with me man i know i can go on long now it says fidelity expert fairly long tail of institution driving mainstream crypto adoption now it says uh fidelity's fund group already working to get spot bitcoin uh, metaverse and crypto industry etfs approved in the u.s now they haven't yet but they're working on it guys now it says fidelity's considerably co cryptocurrency endeavors are just getting started and an executive said that thanks in part to an accelerated institutional investor interest in digital assets right it says about 90 percent of institutions interested in crypto expect to have skin in the game by 2026 according to a fidelity study of institutions investors released uh released last year now guys that that goes to show you you're still early right there's still plenty of time a lot of people think that they missed out because bitcoin's at you know uh 41k and ethereum's at 3000 and everybody thinks they missed out but there's still plenty of time and we're still early and that's what they're saying here a lot of institutions are barely getting skin in the game right guys as they say here right and by 2026 they said you know there'd be 90 percent so the sooner you jump aboard the better now i want to finish with this uh paragraph here right now it says while we've seen tremendous growth in terms of the institution adoption if you think you've missed it you have it, Sandler said. There is still a very long tail of folks that are just beginning to get started in this space. Now, that's not just for institutional investor guys. Now, that goes for retail investors such as you and I as well, right? It's it, We're still early is what I'm trying to get at. And that's what I was trying to point out and iterate on this article, guys. You know what I mean? Still early. You could still... You know, you could still invest, guys. Remember, none of this is financial advice, but the sooner the better, man. Five years from now, you'll be grateful and thankful that you uh, um, invested in crypto. But anyways, this is what I had for you on this Sunday, man. God bless, and hope you guys have a wonderfully blessed uh, Sunday. Until tomorrow, your boy Hamaji is out. Peace.